what we have here today is a starter. And a lot of these GM starters are very similar uh, to each other for different various years and even various makes. A lot of the internal parts are the same. And so we're going to get into how to rebuild one of these. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the solenoid from the top. Sometimes these go bad on their own. So uh, maybe you don't need to take the rest of the unit apart. So once you have it out of the car like this, disconnect the connection that's sending power to the motor. And we have two screws that hold it to the housing. So we have the spring. What the solenoid does is it engages the gear that would be engaged into the flywheel and that would be the retracted position. So that's what your that's one part of what your solenoid does is it engages the starter drive. The other thing your solenoid does is here at the back and that is it controls switches power to the motor and it should switch it in such a way that this is engaged fully with the flywheel like that before the motor is energized. Now, sometimes if you do have just a problem back here, you can go in here and clean these or rotate the contacts and get fresh surfaces. So this isn't necessarily a waste of time. And even if you find some new old replacement parts, new old stock parts, or you can get the internals for these. They're not sold anymore new, but they are around for some models. None of these should be very tight. So what you have here is this contact um, is for the, uh, some, some ignition systems uh, bypass the um, ballast resistor upon cranking. So that's the contact for that. This is the contact that goes to the ignition switch to the start position. That goes to the starter motor and this one goes to the battery. So you can see like on this contact here, you could take this out and turn it 180 degrees and get a fresh surface you can, on this side. So sometimes you can get in here and do things, but when the solenoid energizes, pulls the plunger, the plunger pushes the pin, the pin pushes the, the brass disc and makes electrical contact. So that's what happens in there. And like I say, sometimes you can clean those up and repair them. Sometimes you can get replacement parts and other times you just uh, replace it. Now here's uh, the main assembly, the motor assembly. Take the end plate off. So always when we're taking motors and generators apart, we're always careful to make sure that the washers in here are in order and that we keep tra track of how they go in and how many there are. I'm gonna pull them all out, set them in the way they came out and set that aside. Now here are the motor brushes and I see a problem. Can you guys spot the problem right off? This um, brush holder assembly, the spring is broken. You can see the gap between the brush and the commutator. And here, a very strong spring. But these are spring loaded and these are just flopping around loose. So that's why this starter didn't work. So we can pull this whole assembly out of here for right now. And so I know that on my list of parts that I need to get new brush uh, springs. And I'll show you this one here is completely missing out of here. So probably fallen out at some point in time. 
Maybe somebody's been in here before us. This was the starter that was on our 64, and it just stopped starting one day. So that spring is completely gone. So we'll order um, springs and brushes. That's the unfortunate thing here is you have to take these things apart to figure out exactly what you need. Now we can remove the armature with the uh, overrunning clutch. And this is, the, this is the fork that engages the clutch. You want to inspect this. This one does have some flats on it. Um, this is another part that used to be able to buy in the old days. It is only available as new old stock or new old replacement stock anymore. So this can all be thrown in the parts washer and cleaned. The overrunning clutch here, see that turns one direction and not the other. It turns this way, it turns the whole shaft, it turns that way freely. And what that's for is when you get somebody that likes to um, hold the key in the start position after the motor's running, that's what keeps from overspeeding the uh, starter. Uh, um, if this didn't free wheel, this would be turning an extremely high RPM being driven by the, uh, by the ring gear on the flywheel or on the, on the flex plate. So once again, we will remove any loose washers. This washer has a step in it. We want to note what direction that goes, and that goes this way, and that's to retain a um, little snap ring. In there and these little snap rings are never a pleasure to get out so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bring you guys back in a minute after I get that little snap ring split ring um, fished out of there now we got to take the um, the drive off get a socket fits over the shaft that lines up with the ring give it a tap and all we have to do now is get the the ring over the out of the groove here. Sometimes easier said than done. Now, if your intention here is simply to reuse this starter drive. Don't, don't think it's a good idea to put this in some solvent to clean it up. You just want to wipe it down, inspect it. If you've not been having trouble with it and you don't want to replace it, um, just wipe it down. The grease that's used inside this overrunning clutch is its own sort of thing. It's not available anymore. And this is basically a sealed unit. If you wash the grease out of here, you've ruined it. It fits good on the shaft, not a lot of play, so put it aside, it's still good, if it's still good. Now what I have to do with this is, I have to take this home, my workshop, put this in my lathe, and take a tool and cut this commutator back, just so it's perfectly round again. Get any imperfections out, this one's pretty good, sometimes you get them, they're full of ruts, uh, where the brushes, may, if the brushes have gotten worn down, they've been arcing, they make a real mess of it. Uh, this one here is pretty good. You could actually just use something like some Scotch-Brite and polish it up like that. I'll, I'll put it in the lathe, put a dial indicator on it and see how good it looks because nothing catches my fingernail. If it catches your fingernail, then you got it. Then you have to turn it. Well, now that we got the unit completely torn down, we figured out what parts are broken and worn. Uh, I'm going to replace the solenoid because it was um, somebody had been in there before. It was missing some washers. Replace the brushes and I replace the springs. Put this in the lathe and check 
with a dial indicator to see if the commutator's out around. Doesn't catch my fingernail. So it's the brushes haven't been arcing. So that spring must have just let go and, and failed. Um, so I'm gonna get all these parts cleaned up, get replacement parts on order, and bring you guys back for a part two when we put it all back together again. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Sonnen Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family, each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. You can donate by clicking the link in the video description.